Today's video has multiple segments. The first segment would be me going through the that battle and see what I disagree with and giving my uh, opinion on the verdict and how they did their research and all of that. Then I'm gonna go into talking about what Weibo Warrior said um, because I'm really interested in his opinion. You know, I've been subscribed to him for some time. He always gives his dead battle opinions. Um, and um, I don't know, I thought it would be cool to respond to other people. And in the third part of the of the video, I'm gonna do a full debunk of this one person's video. Basically, I'm going to debunk their quote unquote debunk because I thought he was pretty dumb. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just debunk their debunk. Some of the strongest shinobi in the world. The Raikage is even stated to be fast enough to move at light speed. And even weaker ninja like Orochimaru have dodged literal photon beams. First of all, I am glad that that battle finally acknowledges that the mid tiers of the verse are light speed. That's that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing is I'm pretty sure Orochimaru is stated no no sorry Hiruzen is stated to be the strongest out of the five Kage and Orochimaru fought him. So I don't know if I would agree that uh, the Raikage is stronger than Orochimaru. I don't know. Maybe it's possible physically maybe or maybe he's faster but uh i don't know in a battle or tomorrow i would say probably wins only gained a healing factor strong enough to regenerate from having half his body vaporized but also the terrifying Rinnegan. i don't know necessarily if the healing factor comes from hashirama probably it comes from the tentails if i had to guess rather than Hashirama or maybe it's a combination of the two where Hashirama gave him like you know healing powers and the tentacles really amplify them to an uh, absurd extent maybe that's the case but I don't know if it's ever stated that this recovery he has where he's, he recovers half of his body being blown up is like um is like because of Hashirama the world's greatest nap time ever <gasps> look what you people have done to him i know i know i am very sorry Madara's power was so insane he was considered comparable to the original sage of six paths the dude who helped create the friggin moon Considering even base Madara has displayed speeds on par with light timing ninja, we know Ten Tails Madara would have to be significantly faster thanks to the Ten Tails' power. Remember how in the previous dead battles they were struggling to even put Six Pats Naruto and DMS Kakashi and Six Pats Sasuke at light speed? And now they're like, oh yeah, like the mid tiers of the verse are like light speed, sure. This is actually insane. Whoever, whoever made them on, go on the right track, thank you very much. Is there a character that could possibly even touch Madara Uchiha? Kishimoto himself didn't even know. Madara's power was so overwhelming, the only thing that could take him down was treachery. Yeah, people keep saying that, but like, Kakwa is way stronger than him. So that doesn't really make any sense. Oh yeah, uh, Madara is so overpowered, we don't know how to beat him. So, to cap out, we're gonna bring up a character that's even more powerful than Madara. That, that doesn't really make any sense. Heavy hitters like Kenpachi, who sliced this 120 kilometer wide asteroid to pieces. That's roughly the width of Great Britain. An asteroid of this size would have to carry a kinetic energy of at least 44 petatons of TNT. And 
I'm curious if this meteorite is bigger than the one Madara create the ones Madara created. Um, not even because like I care about which one which fate is stronger. I'm just kind of curious which one is bigger, you know. So overall, I thought that, that battle was pretty decent. The research wasn't too bad. The power scaling wasn't too bad. Pretty on point. Obviously, I would do it differently, but for that battle standards, this is pretty good. Um, I don't have that much to complain about. And you're going to see in the third part of the video why I don't. Because um, I'm going to full on respond to the guy who quote unquote debunks this that battle while both characters can be argued at different levels of power i think madara has more tangible feats that are clearly shown in the manga and anime he clearly uses um one he uses jutsu such as the Planetary devastation, which rips giant meteors out of the ground, which basically covered an entire country. And he also used the God Tree to spread its roots across the entire planet's surface. Whoa, that's actually pretty good. He actually guessed what they were gonna say. That's pretty impressive, because those are like basically the feats that they're using for this, uh, that battle mostly. Um, he scales to Naruto, who blocked an attack that cut the entire moon in half, and the person who did that should be probably weaker than Madara, and he could do that multiple times. So, that's easily a continental, possibly higher feat. Weirdly enough, they never use the moon level feat for uh, Jubi Madara, even though they use it for Eight Gates Guy, who is, like, weaker than Madara, and I feel like that feet visually would have represented even better the power that Naruto characters have you know and made people more akin to agreeing with their um, with their verdict but I don't know just my opinion and he has the Renegan which counters arguments such as Aizen being invisible to him because he's a Shinigami or him trying to put Madara under an illusion his eyes possibly could counter that while on the other Again, very well. This is literally what they said in the episode. I feel like he pre-watched this. Like, it's a little too accurate. It's a, it's actually kind of scary how accurate he was with his predictions. Except the one with Naruto um, and the moon level thing. He's very on point. Like, he, he, he even the phrasing is very similar. Um, he might be a dead battle agent in disguise actually. I feel like he I feel like he's a dead battle agent in disguise and he's lying to us. Pretty solid. Um just uh like the uh, scaling eyes into the Soul King with the multi planet thing, um holding the worlds together. I'm not completely sure on that. I feel like the argument for that could also be that Yuha at the time might have been close in power to the soul king or something um i hear i heard people making arguments like that or of course the argument that i think they even used in that battle that aizen was ready to take on the soul king or to become the new soul king but i guess the argument that i hear the most frequently is that ichigo i think in a data book or something is stated to be the strongest character ever in the verse which would make him stronger than the Soul King, and then Aizen fights him, right? Or something like that. I feel like that's the argument people used. Either that or Aizen might have been stated to be the strongest, but I'm pretty sure it was Ichigo. Um, but that's the same, it's kind of weird, because we weren't really introduced to the Soul King yet, so... I don't know. And the uh, Calc with the Madara spreading the tree across the planet, I'm not sure they might have highballed that, like... I'm not sure how they calculated that exactly, but like, how would you know exactly how big the roots are? Like, you could see them at the trunk, but roots get smaller as they go out, and we don't know exactly. Like, they only they would only go to the places on the planet where there there's actually people to like grab onto to put into the infinite Tsukiyome. So I feel like, with some assumptions, 
we could definitely calculate how strong that fit was. I do believe it's probably a high ball because I don't see how that would be planet level. But you know, I also might be wrong. Uh, I would probably put it around if I had to guess. It's somewhere around like uh, multi-continental level or like moon level closer than you know, uh, planet level. First off, when when they fight and Madara is essentially blocking Aizen Zanpakuto with his fan weapon thing, that's really laughable. It's a Zanpakuto, it's not a normal sword. Yeah, so? What about it? Like, what kind of argument is that? It's not a, it's not a normal sword, it's a Zanpakuto. Okay, so? That shit's not a normal fan either. He could, Madara could block like... A Rasengan tail beast bomb from Naruto with it easily, casually, no problem. And if you want me to be a dickhead, I could point out how KCM Naruto is stated to be to be like planet level, and so Kurama, and so Kurama in uh, Avatar mode again. But like, what's your what's your point? Oh, it, it's it's a it's a fucking uh, uh, it's a Zampakto. So there's not an argument. You just said something. <laughs> you just said a thing. It's not really an argument. I guess you can say, oh, whatever, just for the animation purposes, just enjoy the fight and whatever. And okay, that that's fine. That's a fine argument. But it's still laughable. It's still really stupid. If it's so laughable and stupid, why aren't you making an argument against it? You're kind of just saying it's dumb and just virtue signaling to Bleach and Aizen fans. That's about it. The internal energies work and uh, Naruto and Bleach is kind of amusing because Chakra and Ryuku are not the same thing. They try to say it's the, the same thing, but it's really not. That's no, that that is not what they said. I, were you even paying attention? I'm sorry. They didn't say they're the same thing. They said they are similar because if you don't know, Ryatsu is spiritual energy. That's what Ryatsu means, basically. And in Naruto, Chakra is a combination of physical and spiritual energy. Therefore, Chakra being very similar to Ryatsu in that sense that half of it is formed out of spiritual energy. Do, do you get it? Do you understand? It's not that hard to follow. There. Madara being able to essentially absorb Aizen's uh, Kido attacks? No. That's, <laughs> again, just laughable. Now, I don't know if I agree with that battle myself, but to call it dumb or stupid, it's dumb and stupid into itself. Because it actually would make sense for you know, Madara to be able to absorb um, spiritual things as Chakra is half uh, spiritual in nature. And also the Rinnegan gives you the ability to, you know, uh, absorb spirits and uh, souls. So it's not that outlandish to believe that Madara could absorb his attacks and even his uh, spiritual energy. Uh, Madara summoning a meteor during the battle, again, kind of laughable considering the fact that the only reason why he summoned those double meteors was because he was an Endo Tensei, a reincarnation, so he would have just regenerated. Wait, are you saying that Jubi Madara wouldn't be able to tank those meteors? That's kind of, that's kind of weird thing to say. Even then, he was able to to actually summon or at least create even bigger meteors when he was in Jubi form. Like, even that battle calculated how much bigger those meteors were in this episode. And he created them. And he wasn't like destroyed by them or attacked by them, whatever the hell. Uh, he wasn't even worried by them. Even Naruto and Sasuke were able to slash him, uh, to slash them easily. And you can easily argue that Madara was like a little stronger than them at that point. So, w what is this argument? The illusion. They refer to Aizen's abilities as illusions, which they're not. It's a complete overtake of his opponent's senses. 
that's not really illusions. He Sir, I think you might need to Google what illusion means. Because I don't think you understand what illusion means. Do you believe that illusions are like when magicians do magic tricks or when you see a mirage in the desert? Like, what do you think illusions are? Illusions could be sensed by like all of your senses, like a smell. There can be audio illusions, visual. Uh, what, what are those called? Tactile? I don't know the ones uh, with the touch. Uh, smell. Smell can be uh, deceiving. Um, and all of those forms are forms of illusions that we see in Naruto. And that's what Kyuka Shigetsu is. I don't know what you think illusion means, but it, it doesn't mean what you believe. The quote unquote complete overtaken of the senses. Yeah, it means that you just tricks the senses into believing something else, which is what an illusion is. Literally, just Google the word illusion. Please Google the word illusion, okay? Okay, please. He, compl he completely controls Madara's senses. Now, Madara breaking out of it makes no sense, and him putting eyes in the Genjutsu makes no sense. No, it absolutely makes sense. Like, I'm sorry to break it to you, but what Aizen does is illusions. Like, it's it's an illusion. That's what an illusion means. The tricking of, sen of the senses. That's what an illusion means. And when it comes to Naruto, characters like Itachi can literally create infinite universes within their illusions. They can create an infinite universe out of this illusion. And characters like Tritomo Sharingan Sasuke, who's relatively weak compared to like Madara, especially to Jubi Madara, can break out of that Genjutsu. Okay? And there have been way get way stronger Genjutsus in Naruto than even uh, Tsukuyomi. Okay? There's the infinite Tsukuyomi, which basically covers the entire planet. I don't know how many people are in Naruto, but let's say they're like a billion, okay? Let's say there's a billion or like hundreds of millions of people under each own universe. This this Genjutsu creates in their own minds an infinite universe where they're happy and all that shit. But on a scale that encompasses the whole fucking planet. What did Aizen do that's as impressive as that? And the part with him not being able to be put under Genjutsu... Well, here's the problem. Aizen hasn't really shown any mental hacks uh, or mind hacks or illusion hacks or whatever resistance himself. He puts other people under it, but nobody else has this type of ability and Aizen has never really resisted it. So you can't really make an argument that Aizen would be able to do it. Not only that the infinite Tsukuyomi or the Tsukuyomi even, create illusions that trick all your five senses but also they create infinite universes without your within your brain and characters like madara are easily able to break out of that shit okay and even create stronger genjutsus like the infinite tsukuyomi which again creates an infinite universe without, within your brain but for the whole ass planet billions of people so what the hell has Aizen done that's even close to that? And the answer is really nothing. Again, this information is present in Naruto. And I keep having to say this, but again, just because Madara has Chakra and Aizen has spiritual power, Ririku, it does, it's not the same thing. Genjutsu and Naruto works by disrupt, disrupting the Chakra pathway system in the opponent's brain. Humans and Naruto are normal humans, they have the chakra power system. So, yeah, that's how they have chakra, that's how they can perform their various jutsu and attacks. Yeah, except, except no. Um, if you paid attention to Naruto, there's several characters in the series that have no brains or no chakra system and they're still susceptible to the genjutsu. Or there's never stated that they're like immune to Genjutsu or anything. So that 
it's not really an argument. Just because he doesn't have like a a chakra pathway system or whatever doesn't mean he can be put under uh, under Genjutsu. Genjutsu doesn't necessarily have to uh, doesn't necessarily need that. Uh, that's just just a misconception. That's like weaker Genjutsu needs that, but strong Genjutsu doesn't even need that. Also, the fact that they they show Aizen's encounter with Shinji when Shinji unleashes Shikai, and if you don't know, Shinji's ability is that it reverses the opponent's senses. So, for example, up not well, not only up is down and the left is right, but every everything is is reversed. So, given that, if you remember, Aizen was able to very quickly, essentially learn how to fight and how to maneuver when everything is inversed, his perception was inversed, everything was inversed. Like, it, it's mind-blowing to even think about how you would be even able to think or even operate under, under, under that circumstance, but he was able to figure it out because he's an insane freaking genius. So, the fact that he is placed in a genjutsu by Madara, it's just, no, it's just, again, just laughable. Yeah, that's cool and all, but if you remember in part 1, Tsunade was able to reverse Kabuto's um, nerve system in such a way that if he moved his right arm, his left leg would move, and let's say he tried to move his forehead, his left cheek, uh, his, his left ass cheek would move instead, and um, so on. And he was able to literally figure that shit out in like what? Two or three pages and that's like part one kabuto who is nothing comparably speaking with madara in terms of power or intelligence especially if you talk about jubi madara like what are you even trying to say here also that doesn't really have anything to do with like um madara's genjutsus because they create their own um Genjutsu in Naruto, uh, especially the Infinite Tsukuyomi, for example, or Tsukuyomi in general, is able to create, again, its own universe within the people that uh, it's under control's mind. So, it's nothing... Shin Shinji's thing is nothing compared to, like, what fucking Itachi did when he put, like, um, his girlfriend in, like, I don't know, years, like, 20, 30, 40 years of her life within like a millionth of a second. Itachi used it on a fellow Chiha and made her live out her entire life in the span of one one hundredth of one one thousandth of one one millionth of a second. Like, it's not even close. Yeah, then how did he have Madara under control? Which again, Madara breaking from his control, kind of laughable. Ha 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 ha, very funny. But like, why? What? Why? You keep saying, oh, it's laughable, it's stupid, it dum it's dumb. But you don't really make an argument about it. You just say, it's stupid, and then move on. Okay, sure. You can call it stupid. Doesn't mean you made an argument, though. So, yeah. This is it. This was the video. This is a pretty long video, given the fact that I made it in, what, one day? And I included clips and stuff from multiple YouTubers. Um, yeah, pretty cool. This was a dead battle, this was my debunk to someone's debunk, my opinion on what Uwebu Warrior said, and my opinion on, you know, the dead battle itself. Um, and that's about it. Thank you. Subscribe, like, and all of that.